Michael Shannon is a striking force on screen. He is responsible for a variety of memorable and interesting characters, and his roles in films like Man of Steel and The Shape of Water garner attention and praise from audiences and critics. He has built an incredible career, evolving from that guy who stood out in countless small roles to currently being one of the most sought-after character actors working in the business. Here are 10 things you probably didn't know about Michael Shannon. He started acting so he could get out of playing sports. Michael Corbett Shannon was born on August 7, 1974 in Lexington, Kentucky. Growing up, he initially wanted to become a jazz musician or an architect. But he started acting because he was never athletic. He said, One of the reasons I'm an actor is because I was no physical specimen as a child. I wasn't athletic and didn't have any prowess in that regard. I was on a flag football team when I was in second grade for a couple of weeks, but then we moved before our first game, so I didn't get to play. I wanted to rip those flags right out of those little boys' pants, just rip those little shreds of fabric right out of their waistbands, and I never got to do it. I'm still chasing that flag. He got his start in theater. He began his career in theater and acted in his first professional play at age 16 in Winterset at the Illinois Theater Center. Since then, he has appeared in off-Broadway shows in New York as well as in London's West End, such as Killer Joe and Bug. For many years, his primary focus was on stage performance. He also co-founded a theater called the Red Orchid Theater in Chicago, where he still regularly performs. His first film was Groundhog Day. Shannon made his film debut in 1993 with Groundhog Day, the romantic comedy starring Bill Murray. He had a small part in the film, but played it to perfection. The film made him make subsequent appearances in multiple movies, including Eight Mile, Vanilla Sky, and Pearl Harbor. He was almost cast as Cable. Cable made his live-action debut in 2018's Deadpool 2, with Josh Brolin stepping into the role. In an interview with IndieWire, Deadpool 2 producer Kelly McCormick confirmed the long-standing rumor that Michael Shannon was up for the role of Nathan Summers, a.k.a. Cable, before the part ultimately went to Brolin. McCormick said, he actually almost was Cable. Then there was some sort of hiccup conflict at the very last minute, and then we just ended up reconnecting on this one and felt really lucky that this was the role for him. Because Josh was so good as Cable, I can't even imagine. How he prepared for General Zod's role. 2013's Man of Steel was undoubtedly disappointing, but there was no faulting Michael Shannon's performance as General Zod. Following in the footsteps of Terrence Stamp can have been easy, but Shannon did it adeptly, and that's thanks in no small part to his preparation for the role. In addition to hitting the gym and undergoing rigorous physical and stunt training, he also prepared for the role by likening the movie's story to real-world environmental issues. He said, I looked at Man of Steel as a very socially relevant movie, not necessarily a comic book movie. Here's a story about some people, a civilization. They lived on a planet and used up all the resources and destroyed the planet, and they thought the way to solve the problem was just to go get another planet. You hear people bandying that idea around these parts from time to time. He felt ridiculous shooting in the motion capture suit. While shooting Man of Steel, Shannon admits that he did not have much faith in CGI technology when starting filming and says that he felt ridiculous shooting in the motion capture suit. He told The Guardian, I was supposed to be coming out of a spaceship, which was basically some wooden stairs they'd built and painted neon green. I walked down them in my unitard, acting like I'm General Zod. It takes a lot of faith, because the first day you're there you want to go home and cry because you just think no one's ever going to take this seriously. His name became a slang term on The Shape of Water shoot. On the set of The Shape of Water, Shannon's penchant for getting things right in a single take did not go unnoticed by the rest of the cast. He told The Verge that his last name became a verb that denotes excellence in performing. He said, Octavia came up with this term on set, Shannoning, where you get something right in one take. Every once in a while, after one take, Guillermo would be like, that's perfect. And Octavia would say, I Shannoned it. His audition in Revolutionary Road. In Revolutionary Road, Shannon played John Givings, a hyper-observant headcase, a veteran of 27 electroshock treatments, whose bitter insights shatter the fragile harmony of 50s suburbanites Frank and April Wheeler. In an interview with New York Magazine, he recalled how badly he'd wanted the part. In his audition, he pulled out every stop when it was time to tell his controlling mother, played on screen by Kathy Bates, and in the audition room by the casting director, to shut up. When it was over, she told him that in all her years in the business, she'd never felt so personally wounded by an actor's reading. 
Shannon said, I guess for years and years, I've been wanting to tell my mother to shut up, and I finally got an opportunity to do it. One of the great things about acting is you can do things that in real life would get you in trouble. I think that's something I figured out pretty early on. He formed a band called Corporal. He is the singer, songwriter in the band. Back in 2002, Shannon formed the indie rock band Corporal alongside his pals Ray Rizzo and Rob Batesel. They recorded their debut self-titled album in 14 days, but it took them 18 months to finish due to the band members' conflicting schedules and other commitments. He once made Winona Ryder cry during their very first movie together. When actors Michael Shannon and Winona Ryder came together for the first time, Shannon made quite an impression on his co-star. So much so that he ended up bringing Ryder to tears. They both co-starred in the 2012 feature The Iceman, a fictional retelling of real-life serial killer Richard Kuklinski, who was responsible for several infamous crimes. In an interview with Young Hollywood, Ryder was so impressed by Shannon's illicit acting ability, but she also admitted that watching her co-star work was occasionally terrifying. She said, he made it frightening sometimes. In one scene, where we argue and he storms out of the room, the script just says, Michael leaves the room and goes to the garage, but when he left the room he was furious and he knocked things over and pushed everything off the table. I was honestly scared, and afterwards, I even started crying. It was all unexpected, which made the reaction much more real.